I want to show you some rainwater harvesting resources that I've uh, put here for you. If you go to your shared Google Drive for this class, I'll drop down that triangle, and you go to the lectures, and here is the set of lectures that have to do with water, which we're doing today, and storm water and so forth. If you click on that folder, you see the PowerPoints. If you drop down this triangle thing, there's one of those folders that has articles and extra resources in it. And in this are some things including a uh, building code and uh, monthly pre precipitation data. Here's the later Texas Rainwater Harvesting Manual for you. And here are a couple of system calculators for you. This one, uh, this second one, is from ARCSA, and it's an Excel spreadsheet that's all set up with equations. So if you want to plug in your local rain data and your house data, you can use this to begin calculating a rainwater harvesting system. So, yay! All right, now let's look at the various elements of a rainwater harvesting system. And we said there are six basic elements, so we'll, in this lecture we'll do catchment, which is the roof, and conveyance, which is the gutters. Catchment means the surface on which the rain falls. So here you see a roof. Uh, looks like a standing seam metal roof with enamel on it. That's ideal for rainwater. A smooth surface is better. We don't really want asphalt shingles for several reasons. Uh, one, they're not smooth. Two, they can support the growth of all kinds of mold and algae and microorganisms. And three, they can leak petroleum compounds. What we really want is something like a standing seam metal roof like you see here. And if you can get one with a, an enamel or powder coated finish on it, that's good. We don't want wood with preservatives on it. We don't want anything with copper or lead or zinc. Uh, copper is toxic to plants and isn't too good for us too in large quantities. In Texas, where the Texas Rainwater Harvesting Manual came from, they developed the idea of a thing called a rain barn. And a rain barn is just a catchment area, a roof, with um, cisterns under it. And its purpose is to catch rainwater. When rainstorms come, they want to be set up to catch it. Here's a building in Eugene. You've probably seen this, Fourth and Mill might be fourth and high. Uh, so here are some standing seam metal roofs uh, designed to catch rainwater. You can kind of see a cistern back in the back there. This is a residence in Eugene uh, up off of Old Dillard Road, I think. Um, landscape architect and her husband. This is a stainless steel roof, I believe, and it drips down into the cistern is under this decorative granite rock there. Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center is in Austin, Texas, where they're very interested in rain and rain and rain harvesting. And you're going to see pictures from this center over and over again because this center has really focused on researching rainwater harvesting and how to do it both efficiently and aesthetically. What we see here are four different roofs from the Wildflower Center. You'll notice they all have a similar material and they're all designed for catching rain and directing it into some gutter or other so it can go to a cistern, to a tank. Here's a, a commercial building now, any time you see a roof that looks like this, sort of a butterfly wing thing, you can assume that that is probably for harvesting rainwater. Because when you think about it, 
why would anybody design a roof that shape? That is just, if you just had a plain house that shape, that is a place to catch water and leak into the inside of the house. That's not what you want. So this must have been done intentionally for the purpose of gathering water. And yes, it was, and the water goes down here into the collection system. Here are these cooling towers that you've seen before. Remember these? They have wetted pads, uh, pads with water on them up in the top, and evaporation cools the air and it drops down the tower. Where does the water come from? Well, they have rainwater harvesting catchments up on top. Here on the left is Oberlin College. This whole roof collects rainwater. Here on the right is a large uh, sports stadium in Australia. These two half shell things are um, retractable ceilings, so you can bring them across. They're motorized. You can bring them across and cover the stadium when you need to, or you can open them when you want sun. And the entire gridded surface of each shell is a catchment area for their rainwater collection system. Up at the top, here is a commercial plaza in Phoenix, Arizona. And if you've ever been to Phoenix, Arizona, you know that it is hot there. And you also know it doesn't rain very often. But when it does rain, it comes in a downpour. So these structures are over tables. You can see a person there. Um, these are tables outdoors of this uh, market area. They provide shade, so it's shady underneath, and they're pointed upward like an inverted umbrella in order to catch rain. So when a rainstorm does come through, they're all set up to collect the water. Here's a, a bus stop shelter at Berkeley. Um, nobody told me that that was for catching rainwater, but I can't imagine why else they would make it that shape. Those were catchment areas. Now let's think about conveyance, which is a fancy way of saying gutters. We need to get, we need to convey the rainwater from the roof to the cistern. And here is Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center again. Uh, here on the side of this building is a roof that's tipped down towards a gutter, and that gutter is going to go into something. This one is a big sandstone cistern out in the middle of the, the yard, and here is a gutter, a half-circle gutter, that feeds rainwater into it. So again, we want materials that are smooth um, and not toxic. And the thing you have to remember about these gutters is, you know the saying, water runs downhill? you have to maintain a continual slope on these gutters. If it goes downhill some places and then is level or uphill other places, the water will not flow down. So you have to maintain a slope. That's the trick. Then you can use downspouts, like you see here, to collect water out of the gutter and direct it to some place. You often see something called a rain chain which is used instead of a downspout to direct rainwater off of a roof. This one right here, this line here, is a chain. This is at that health and wellness building on the LCC campus. Here are some really utilitarian looking pipes. Here are some more channels at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. And their architect uh, strove to experiment with all different uh, sizes and styles and shapes to show what is possible. So here is this beautiful semicircular, uh, these are two views of the same gutter, the semicircular gutter uh, feeding into that big tall cistern. Here's one that has uh, sort of angular sides. And then here is a curving gutter that comes down from the wall. You can see there's a there's a sheet metal gutter here that carries water from someplace else. It feeds water into this channel on top of this curving wall, which carries the water someplace else. 
And so not only does it transport the water, but it lets visitors see the water in action. And that's, some people think that's important. A couple of other examples. Uh, here's one up near Vancouver, BC, that's more, well, arty and architectural. There's the gutter there that's going to feed rainwater into the cistern under those rocks. Here up on Bainbridge Island is a more rustic, uh, more rustic gutter feeding into a cistern. Here's an apartment building in the Pearl District up in Portland. And again, when you see that shape of roof, that inverted butterfly wing deal, you know the purpose of that is to collect rainwater. So that's up in the Pearl District. And finally, here's an older building up in the Pearl District. This is uh, on 10th Street at 10th and Hoyt, and the name of it is 10th at Hoyt. If you're up in the Pearl District riding the streetcar, the streetcar goes right past this. So this is an award-winning apartment building. And uh, the apartment building surrounds this courtyard on all four sides. It collects rainwater off the roof. Here's kind of a diagram. So rainwater comes off the roof through the downspouts and goes through various kinds of sculptural features. When it rains, uh, people who are lucky enough to live here can go outside and watch the water splashing down these things. This is actually a Persian design. We were talking about Mughal, India, and the Persians. This is a water feature like they would have had. Here's a more modern one, and here's another one. This one has colored glass with lights underneath it at night. Um, and by the way, this has, uh, by law, a certain number of the apartments are affordable housing. So this is not for fancy people. This is for regular people, uh, and they can afford to live here. I hope you get a chance to go look at this sometime. It's pretty interesting.